Welcome to the Mojo Market Report. Here's your hosts, Dave Sturgio and Chris Gucci. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mojo Market Report. Right here on a Thursday, it is Dave Sturgio and Chris Gucci, A5, Anthony behind the glass here at Chop Studios. We got a loaded show for you today. We're very excited about today's show because finally, after all this time, it's been... I guess almost a, a, a month, uh, four a weeks. over a month, right? Yeah. Uh, well, so we started on the ninth since week one of football. Yeah, yeah, so it's almost been, uh, well, it's been a month. And um, it's finally time for you to uh, invest. I mean, like, I know you've talked about it for four weeks' time of guys you should go long on, guys you should short, guys you should put multipliers on, guys you're totally avoiding whatsoever, like completely whatsoever. Uh, but today... Uh, I'm going to hand you $1,000, Chris. I'm going to hand you $1,000, and you're going to build my portfolio. Before we get there, I do want to say um, that there's a lot of love being shared right now uh, on the Mojo uh, social apps, and we're talking about guys like Saquon Barkley. So before we get into the whole build your portfolio thing as far as what we're spending, it seems to me, and that's something that we've said already in passing and in the preseason and speaking to Giants fans at MetLife, you know what I mean, like guys like that. They said, and we've all predicted that if Saquon Barkley was to remain healthy for 2022, that he was going to be something. He was going to be a problem, and that's great for the local markets. The Jets are on the rise. The Giants are playing good. Not so great for guys like myself who didn't think I'd have to deal with the Giants this year as a as a competitive team. But it looks like Saquon Barkley could be something to keep your eye on throughout the course of the year. Yeah, unfortunately, I got to learn that firsthand on nah, Sunday yeah, in right. bloody London. <laughs> but look, I'm I'm a Penn State guy, so I do okay. I do have a, a small allegiance towards Saquon. I'm still a little hesitant because of the nature of the sport and the position. And I'll talk about that in my um in my little rundown, or not even a rundown, but my your portfolio, my portfolio. Okay, I, I'm I like I said, I'm nervous. Uh, I I have an idea where you're going, but you're spending my money now. You're you're basically my financial advisor heading into the Mojo market. If I wanted to hand you a thousand dollars and say, hey man. Sprinkle this over everything good. Uh, don't make me lose any money. You know, like get me, give me some safe bets. Give me some long shots. Give me some things that you want to see on a, on, a, on a, not even a day to day, more or less long term investments. Yeah. So the the way I'm going to go about this is I essentially look at this as a five year plan. Mm -hmm. There's some there's some guys that what you is may, it? Don't die. <laughs> Come on. Well, that's funny. Big Daddy. No, I don't. Anybody? I don't get the reference. I'm not. Ah. I'm not the movie guy like you. Ah. But yes. All right. So it's a five-year plan. There may be a time throughout the five years where you went, might want to cash in on one of your players. That's not a that. There's no rules against doing that. And when I when I'm talking like this, everything is always fluid, and you want to maximize your gains. That's essentially how we're going to do this. I love it. But a five-year plan, you want to figure out when the best time to sell a player is. But we're not going to go about when we're going to sell. We're just going to do the investing today, and then throughout the course of our um, our time together, I'll I'll kind of massage the portfolio for okay. you and go which way or. Left, right, up, hopefully Now, you up. did say something to me yesterday. You're like, I'm going to build this, and I'm going to make sure I touch on every position. At least one guy. Yeah, so that is the rule. There is That's not my it's not, rule. It's not a rule in, mo in Mojo, rule by the way. You mojo, don't have to do but this. For, this for, for show purposes, I am going to incorporate uh, at least one player from every position. I, myself, will be quarterback and wide receiver heavy. Okay. Um, that won't really be indicated on this, but they're wide receivers, definitely. All right, There's so you have $1,000, obviously, and you're going to be spending it. Look. Share prices are are you know based off of what they've done in the in their careers already, plus their future pro, uh, projections in the market. That's how they come with the share price. So we're not so worried about that right now. You do have some top dogs, I'm going to assume, and then some guys you're going to kind of take a little bit of a risk on. So start it off. What do we got first? Who are you unveiling as first? Your first investment. Well, my first investment is my money. So where are we going first here? Well, this is an easy one okay, for me, guys. So this is, a, this is a very, very easy one. This is the layup. This is the thing that's going to keep your portfolio strong through and through, no matter what happens. Now, I shouldn't say that because Justin Herbert's share price is basically all future. Uh -huh. It's not much banked, and Mahomes has a ton of future in there as well right so it is a little bit of a risk but when we talk about quarterbacks these two in particular and especially pat mahomes he's he's second right now as far as the quarterbacks go but because of the success that he's had he already has a pretty decent bank value obviously pat mahomes super bowl champion it. yeah super bowl champion uh multiple super bowl appearances mvp to his resume and if you see what he's doing now he's just entering his prime Pat Mahomes, he's here to stay. The league is going to take care of Patty Mahomes, that's for sure. 15 touchdowns, two interceptions in 2022, almost 1,400 yards within the first yeah, five so games. So this is so an easy one for me. Killing and it out I'm, there. I'm actually going to incorporate a little more risk here i'm going multipliers on pat mahomes oh no i know, yeah. I know yeah, that yeah, yeah. that definitely increases the risk but i'm looking at my mojo portfolio right now as a potential 
putting me on a yacht one day with Pat Mahomes, hopefully. <laughs> right so next to Jerry Jones. I'm, I'm going to go 250 on Patty Mahomes, and I'm going to go another 250 on Justin Herbert. You're We've, spending $500 on my I'm spending on $500 on quarterbacks right out of the <laughs> I'm, gate, I'm, I'm and it's a very, already. very smart investment as far as I'm concerned because, look, this is two guys that I didn't even have to wait to, to understand the market as well as I do now. I got these guys right away. I didn't get in on Mahomes multiplier nah, the other day, but I have one of my attention. own. I have one of my own because I'm definitely not shy about multiplying Pat Mahomes. If you look at their career numbers over the course of their entire, obviously, their tenure with the NFL, you got to see that it's been a, a constant stairway for Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, the spikes are the the multiple, uh, the MVPs, the Super Bowls, right? And he's balling out right now. Same thing if you spread it out. Obviously, a shorter sample size for Justin Herbert, who's up 213% over the course of his career, and he's only been there for a cup of coffee. So Justin Herbert is on a clear path uh, to take the league by storm going forward. So this is a very, yeah, the a very good investment. Yeah, the stairway to You look at Pat Mahomes. I still don't know about and, the whole $500 on my money right away. Hey, man, look, <laughs> these two guys are very safe as far as I see it. I don't. I think that the market projects that they're going to be, be doing good, even if, they, if there's a crazy chance that either guy – squanders his opportunity on the current team that he's on, which is it's going to take a lot of serious situations to go down right. for that to happen. They're both going to get at least one, maybe two, maybe even three more cracks at a starting gig in the NFL. These guys are very safe as far as nah, these guys are alive. Mahomes got like a 24 year contract, <laughs> so I don't yeah. think he's going anywhere. Mahomes is anytime going nowhere. Plus he owns the Royals now. Like he's just doing, and by the way, shout out to go Yankees tonight. Um, but yeah, so Anyway, so easy money right here. $500 right, dollars going right to the quarterbacks. And I am then, I'm very, I'm very nervous. And then about this. I did say that I was going to um, touch on every position, and there's only one tight end. So I figured I'll get out, get out of the way now, get the tight ends out of the way. And we talked about him a little bit the other day. Mm. And this is my friend, the next Travis Kelsey in oh. this league, and that is a Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews, okay, is added to my portfolio. I, I like this. I, I think he's the guy, clearly. Uh, we talked about him when after, you know, the day after Kelsey scores four touchdowns, we're all saying, like, all right, who's next? You know, Mark Andrews seems to be the guy. Uh, quarterback security is a big thing for me. It feels like Lamar is going to get that long-term guaranteed deal. Everything that he wants, he's going to get. Uh, that's that's big when it comes to all the skill position players over with uh, the Baltimore Ravens. That's why I'm 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 in on this one. Yeah, I, Mark Andrews. Look, we talked about it the other day. The next Travis Kelsey in the making. He has 100 catches to his resume already. One season last year, he put up phenomenal numbers. It doesn't look like there's anybody taking his targets away anytime soon. There are it's run, not likely. There, <sighs> Get it? Isaiah it's definitely likely. not going to be it? Isaiah likely. <laughs> but I do like the player. I just don't like the situation right. when it comes to Isaiah likely. Um, Mark Andrews is that guy. He's he's just got a big deal. He's going to be in Baltimore for the foreseeable future. I would imagine Lamar is going to get another deal. Yeah, of course. His deal, so that that helps. Uh, everybody sees an uptick there. But it's just really about the consistency. There is one thing that kind of scares me, but I'm not going to let this put me off on Mark Andrews. He he does have diabetes. And, like, off-field health issues could be a situation that we, we run into later on down the line. But if you've let anything that you've heard about Mark Andrews and his diabetes – Put you the guy looks like he's Andrews. built out of stone. Up to this point in his career, you've been paying the price because Mark Andrews has delivered on all fronts since he's been in the I league. I think he's going to conquer all that I don't, stuff. Yeah, I, I, I can't foresee any of no, that. No, I mean, it hasn't hindered but him I, yet. I feel like it is worth mentioning because of off the field issues and health issues, that is ne necessarily like the two major issues that you could run into with as far as non, if you play well. Right, that has that's one thing in Mojo, but being available and being on the field is another, and I think that it's worth mentioning. But I'm still all in on Mark Andrews. The guy all right, is a little tank. recap here so far: what you've spent, uh, what you've spent on my money so far. So there's your budget. You got four hundred fifty dollars left. You're going fifty dollars on Andrews, two fifty each <laughs> on Patty Mahomes and Justin Herbert. I'm nervous. I'm starting to sweat. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm very. I'm getting very upset. So uh, who's who? Oh, all right, we're moving on to. You said wide receivers is going to be wide receiver heavy. Well, who's the first receiver you got? Where, where are we going here? This is the unveil. Okay, okay, Jalen Waddle. Um, yes, I'm in on it. Um, yes, I agree with it. I want to say it's been a small sample size, but I think the fact that they've added Tyreek Hill and that'll be a long-term play would open up his opportunities, especially when Tua gets back and healthy, which, by the way, he was limited in practice yesterday. So but it's just crazy to think that just like a couple weeks ago, this guy was motionless on the ground, and now he's back at practice. It's just like, it's just yeah, he, crazy how the toughness of these guys. He's not going to play this week, but like no, I said, this is a five-year deal yeah. for me, a five-year plan. So mm -hmm. 
I think Jalen Waddle's in a very good position. I think out of the re receivers last year, that the rookie receivers, Jamar Chase, he was a, he didn't have close to the season Chase had in terms of touchdowns and yardage, but he had very, very good production, over 100 catches out of the gate as a rookie, set the rookie record. Um, and he flew under the radar a little bit. He has some decent bank value after year one, which is rare. It's becoming more of a thing with wide receivers yeah. in the league. But um, I just think the situation that he's in, um, opposite Tyreek Hill for a while. He's always going to be considered the number two over there for a little bit, so it takes a little bit of the shine away in terms of the public perception. Um, and it may or may not diminish his future bank value, which I think he's going to outplay um, over the next course of a couple seasons. And I think it'll be a good time to maybe – Three, four years down the line before he signs that second deal, you could kind of get out on a waddle. But we're talking about investing, not not trading. Um, we can move to the next guy on the list. Waddle, I think, is a little bit of a risk because of mostly bank value, um, mostly uh, future bank. Right. I don't think that it's much of a risk, though, because I think, like I said, great rookie season in a good spot. All right, who do next we got next? I'm feeling now. I'm feeling a little bit. Nah, now I'm not feeling good at all. What Romeo are you doing here? Is this here. a homer pick here? It's, it is a little bit of a homer pick, but at the at the end of the day, I wanted to pick all Packers. I didn't. I stood away from AJ. <laughs> you Dillon still could, but because in I my don't money. believe in him long term for the Mojo market. But look, Romeo Dobbs. He's. It, it doesn't really matter how long Aaron Rodgers plays. Well, this that's guy, exactly. Well, as soon as I saw Dobbs, I'm like, cool for this year. Then what? Well, if Rodgers is done, which he won't well, be, I'm do, sure he'll. They, I think Aaron Rodgers sticks around for a little bit. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, multiply, multiply, multiply. But I think <laughs> Rodgers sticks around for a little bit. But nonetheless, they do have a first round pick waiting in the wings in Jordan Love. That I don't. I know he's not Aaron Rodgers, but look around the league. Is there is Aaron Rodgers on every team? No, no. And there's good receivers on other teams, right? Sure. Sure. So Romeo Dobbs, I think the talent's there. Um, they're believing in him early. He's had splash plays. He's had games where he's gotten multiple targets, eight targets in one game. I think that's really good for a fourth-round pick playing in his third NFL game. Lack of other talent at the position on the team, I think Romeo Dobbs is in a clear position to take the league by storm. And coming into the league as a fourth-rounder, these are the guys that I'm targeting. He's going to be a starter in this league for a few years, at least in the next couple. So, yeah, Romeo Dobbs, 100%. Bye, bye, bye. All right, who's next? What do we you got? Feeling? You're, not, you're not feeling good about Romeo Dobbs? I, no, but here's a guy. Now, here's a guy. You know, this is the one I'm in on because of the fact that he's done so many good things already within this season and kind of came onto the scene last season. I'm in on a Devin Duvernay. We've we spoke about him at length. You would think that this show is sponsored by Devin Duvernay himself because he's like, hey, guys, talk about me. Talk about me more. How about some more today? So we're talking about him more, and it's another Raven. So you talked about it, uh, Mark Andrews and his security with Lamar Jackson. If Duvernay sticks around and carves himself out a nice role, he's got himself a dynamic quarterback to work with for the rest of his career, or at least the beginning yeah, of his so career. Yeah, so Duvernay... To me, uh, you already you diversify with Devin. He's been my guy. He's returning kicks. He's taking handoffs. He's one of their most proven pass catchers outside of Mark Andrews. Bateman's been in and out of the lineup since he's joined the team. Mm -hmm. um, I do like Bateman's talent, but Duvernay coming in at the price at five seventy. He's sitting in between Nico Collins and Kadarius Tony. I do I do think there's promise surrounding both of those guys, but a little more around Nico Collins, unfortunately. I'm Giants completely fans. out on Tony, by the way. Um, <laughs> but with a future bank value uh, of a, a future. Mojo projections of 429, I think that's very modest for a guy that, when I watch him play, I've been in on Duvernay for quite some time. I think that he passes the eye test to me. They put him in a bunch of places. He's going to stick around a very versatile type, like a Randall Cobb type player. Look how long Cobb is stuck around in the league. 48 years. There's always going to be room for a guy that could do it all, and Devin Duvernay is that guy to me. And look, we have to have some fun with this. It's not all about just going in, who's going to make me the most money? Devin Duvernay's been my guy. I know that you like Devin Duvernay. So sure. I felt, Dave, you might you might be. I'm all right with this. You won't be hard-pressed to throw $50 on Duvernay. No. So, yeah, 50 on Duvernay, easy, it's just easy, my paycheck. easy, and have some fun That's with it. it. All right. Duvernay it is. Diversify with Devin Duvernay once again. All right. Where are we going now? We're staying with Alec Pierce. Another baby. receiver. Another $50, another $50 on my boy Alec Pierce. I like Everybody this. Everybody said it, uh, saw it the other day. Alec Pierce is Chris's guy. He <laughs> certainly is my guy. He's the number two wide out on an offense that – I think as a rookie coming in, getting a starting job, nobody really kind of expected him to be the guy coming out. I surprised how how late he dropped in the draft, but the Colts got a good one there. Uh, second round pick, he slots across side Michael Pittman Jr. I think it's a good spot for him. Matt Ryan feeds the number two receivers. He came on a little bit last week, and the, the way he, where he's sitting in between Sterling Shepard, DJ Chark, I think that's do, way do, do, too do, do, low. Do, do. Um, it is all based on his market projections, which I'm a little wary of, but. 
you know, these are the receivers. They're low, low in the only low buy-ins on yeah, these guys. The, we're good. I love his share price, and I think he is uh, one of the relatively ones that, like that that are low right now. And to me, you know, his future. I think it, this is this is a very uh, it's a riskier play because of the fact he's got basically not no bank value. He has bank value, but he doesn't. You know what I mean? But like when I look at a guy like Alec Pierce. I'm cool with it this year because once Matt Ryan starts kind of rolling and, and going into the middle of the season and he's starting to sling the ball around, you're going to feel good about it because they have to respect the run once Jonathan Taylor comes back. Yeah, the Colts are typically a second-half team. But I I worry, you know, as of right now, if you look at the Colts, they're not set up after Matt Ryan. That's the little trepidation I have with an Alec Pierce. Like, what if they go into a a trial period where they where they finish middle I of the wonder, pack this year and they don't have a high draft pick and I think they have Sam Ellinger I think from Texas I wonder if but like I don't up, feel I like how I'm set up they are with that. Matt Ryan What? I wonder how set up they are with Matt Ryan. I, I think mean, Matt Ryan could be the liability right now. I am not Oh, uh, but he's better I, than Carson Wentz. Yeah, of course he is. Um <laughs> Let's talk about Carson Wentz a little bit by uh, the way. Though? Yes, that's, yes. That's a debate. That's a debate at this point. There's no debate. Matt Ryan career wise, yes, 100. percent But right now, Matt Ryan's not doing much. Put me on a team. field right now. Two minutes to go in the game. You're starting on your own 25. Who do you want driving? Matt your... Ryan. Thank you. That's it. That's all you have to know. That's all you have to know. Because Carson Wentz is going to have the ball snapped over his head. Yeah, he's going to look this I'm way. More, he's I'm more or less saying like, he's... what's better for the for the number two receiver? I think Matt Ryan. Yeah, Matt Ryan. Okay. We're going to go Matt there Ryan. We but go. in this case, it's Alec Pierce, $50. You got any more receivers on this thing? I yeah, do. You. Okay, all I right. do. This is my... This is my. This is your gem. This is your diamond gem. in the rough. This is my diamond <laughs> in the rough. He's not a diamond in the rough. Everybody should be in on this guy. Jamison and, uh, Williams. It's Jamison Williams. Yeah. And I'm dropping a C note on Jamison. What? This all is right. my... <laughs> out of the receivers that's, and that's, the running backs, money. this is my second highest in price right now. So the 250 250 on quarterbacks. And then I'm going $100 on Jamison Williams because... As far as I'm looking at this, it's he's the next guy. He's the next Jamar Chase. He's the next Justin Jefferson. There's only one chance to get this price, and that's going to be right now. I I think he might ease him in a little bit slow, so it might not be shot out of the cannon good, but there's no question in my mind that Jamison Williams is the most talented player that came into this draft class, any position as far as I saw it. Um, the injury really set him back, but if you've seen what's happened with in knee injuries, especially at the receiver position, Michael Gallup returned early. Um Odell Beckham Jr. last year, seven months removed from uh, knee surgery. So these these doctors have this surgery down pat. The talent is extremely abundant when it comes to Jamison Williams. And the the guy he's across right now is Amon Ross St. Brown. He's now getting respect from defenses. And Josh Reynolds. And, and Josh and Reynolds. TJ Hawkinson. Have, and they have a really good offensive line. I think the quarterback is an issue, but it hasn't been the issue so far. Now, they might not win many games, but this offense is going to put up points because their defense before stinks. Yeah, before heading into last week, they were the number one scoring offense. And, of course, they were also the dead last defense. But yeah, I digress with that. Nobody worries about defense right now as far as the mojo market is concerned. I actually would welcome all bad defenses, unless I'm shorting guys, of course. And when you short players, that's a whole other ball game. Then you want defense, defense, defense. Yeah, but in this regard, I don't know, I, I don't know about the $100, but I, I trust you. I've known you a long time. I don't think you're just going to take my money and run, right? So I, I'm cool with this. Um, James Williams, obviously, the hype train is is there within this this show, at least. You know, we've been talking about him just as much as we've been talking about Devin Duvernay. Like, James Williams is the guy. And, um, you know, because of this show, guys like my brother have stashed him on his fantasy team. It hasn't even played yet. He's just like, ah, I'm going to wait. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to wait. Because they keep talking about this guy, so something's got to happen, right? So he, he, there it is. There it is. So he could be a league there. winner down the stretch. All right, we'll see. Well, let's get a little bit of a recap here. What do we got? Uh, okay, so Alec Pierce, Romeo Dubs, Devin Duvernay, and Jalen Waddle all at 50 bucks, And then you decided to go nuts on Jameson Williams and spend $100. So you spent eight hundred and fifty dollars on receivers and quarterbacks and tight ends. So now you only have a buck fifty left for me, man. And I wanted to, to, to really start diving into some of these running backs, but now I feel like I can't. Um, with one hundred and fifty dollars left, where are you starting in your running back department? What, what do we got here? So I'm going to keep it local. All right, and you department. did, and there he is. I am going to keep it local. Brees we Hall, got my boy Brees Hall, okay. here. Um, you saw what Brees Hall is capable of doing last week. Um, the versatility that he's bringing to the table immediately. Shoots him up my ranks. Uh, he's gotten like 25 targets this season. Mm -hmm. uh, I think 21 over a two-game stretch. It might actually be more than 25. Plus That's, the 75 catch and run that yeah, he had. So last he's, week. he's got the yak. He's got he's getting the ball in between the tackles. He's clearly their bell cow back. I was a little un, 
you know, a little disappointed because I was a little more high on Michael Carter, which we're going to talk about him soon. Don't oh, worry. no. You didn't. Right? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But, yeah, Brees Hall, I think he's just the most talented young back in football, not named Jonathan Taylor. And we've seen Jonathan Taylor hasn't gotten going so far. Obviously, he's Brees been hurt, Hall, yeah. the, dual, the dual threat, he's doing things that Jonathan Taylor can't do, pe- uh, ca- catching passes. I like the fact that they're a young core. They got a good coach that's going to be committed to running the football. And they're showing right now that – You'd look at them as a power running team because of their running backs that they've drafted high in the last couple of seasons. Robert Sal is a defensive guy. He's bringing in a different attitude. But they're the most pass-happy team in football, but that hasn't taken away from Brees Hall's output. So he's still catching passes. When they do decide to switch it up in cold-weather games and hand the ball off a ton, it's going to be him that gets it, and I like that. All right. I, I, listen, I'm, I'm all on, so on the Brees Hall. So $50 on Brees Hall. Because, okay, look, that's it's running back at the end it's of the day. It's not 100 after scared. all. All right, 100 bucks left. Where are we spending it? Who's next? All right, so we're going to oh, keep it. We're going to keep it. What are you doing? <laughs> the very same backfield. I've been talking very good about him for quite some time, and I like the fact that he's a spellback. Spellbacks to me, I think this is a little bit of a unique way of approaching it, where everyone's going to want to go after the guys that have the insane market projections and they have a chance to really accumulate a ton of carries in a week by week basis. But in this case, it's Michael Carter. I think he's going to do enough. He gets ten touches. He's going to sprinkle in some touchdowns, even in games where where Brees Hall is healthy. If Brees Hall does miss time, guess who's going to see an uptick? It's going to be Michael Carter, no question about it. So I want to inherit those upticks, All right. and I still believe in Brees Hall long term as the guy. But I think Michael Carter is going to play in this league a long time, and I want to have some fun on the local market and keep two Jets. Um, I think it's a little. W- I may or may not do this with my own portfolio because we're spending your money here. Oh, I don't works. know how I would feel about two players on one team fighting oh, for the on. same job. Come on, you did all right. Well, now I'm gonna make an, an Wait, adjustment Dave, at the end of this. No, no, no. I was gonna give you veto power, and we're okay. gonna talk about that at the end. All right. Um, Zeke is not the next back. I know no, it's fifty dollars left. Zeke is not the next guy. <laughs> don't. But pay. it is somebody that's within the NFC East, and I've talked about him a few times as well. And that is the one, Brian Robinson. All right. I listen. Clearly, the story is incredible, right? Obviously, he's coming into the league. He's almost named the starter. Uh, technically, I mean, he was named the starter, really, he was, before he was Antonio about, Gibson was shifted over to there kick There was return. very, very good news coming out about Brian Robinson leading up to the fateful day where he was shot in the leg twice. Uh, if it wasn't for that, we would see we may be having a completely different conversation about Brian Robinson. We might be saying, I wish I brought, bought Brian Robinson a month ago when, when he was the price that he's at, because I think in about a month's time, you're going to see 2 or $3 tacked onto his price because once he gets this job, which I think it's inevitable, Antonio Gibson's proven to me that he is a tough back, he is serviceable, but he's just not the guy. Gibson's not going to be a, a commander lifer at all. I don't believe he is. I think, I think there might be a, a second contract in store, but he's going to have to take a reduced role, maybe shift over to the third down well, back. Well, like I said... He was being labeled as a kick returner yeah, yeah, before the was, season he started. He was a receiver in college. J.D. McKissick is the pass catching back there. Yeah, a lot of backs down there. Yeah. Um, I'm just surprised that they but stink. But I, I think that I think Antonio Gibson's got the talent to stick around. I just don't think he's going to stick around long term in Washington. It was indicated by the draft pick used on Robinson. And the, the talks in camp were Brian Robinson's going to be the first and second down guy. Right. Um, I anticipate that taking hold very, very shortly. He has a bank value of four cents right now. So get him while four he, whole pennies. get him while he's hot because that's going to go up very soon. And the market projections will also go up as soon as he gets named the starter, so which is also coming. That's very why soon. I'm in on a Brian Robinson simply because, and we talked about this at length, whether it be pre-show, post-show, just in conversation about the market, is that if you think they're going to exceed their projected value, now's the time. Yeah, like that's that's how I'm looking and, at and Brian I'm Robinson honest, right I'm, now. I I'm a little. Hesitant with running backs in general. I've talked about it at length. I mean, you got three out of my portfolio, so yeah, I did this for show purposes. I might only go in on one. <laughs> okay. It might it might just be Brees Hall, but so my money is just gone out the window. <laughs> but if you, this is your money. Right? Yeah, no, yeah. no so, kidding. So who's your veto? I'm taking out Michael Carter. Yeah, I agree. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because I don't know if I'm investing long term on a supplemental back. You know, a guy that's gonna. Like counter your starter, your bell cow, your guy that's going to get more touches. I don't know if I'm in vet. Like, look, if you got the if you got that change, then just yeah, sure. Or 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 on the, I'm not saying short the player, but a shorter term. Like if you think that Michael Carter might go nuts on a week 
and you're having a good feeling about him, those are what the you know the day traders are all about. You know what I mean? Like if you think that for whatever reason when he faces off against the the, the Patriots next time around, you're like, oh, you know what, Carter might pop off. The last time he played the Patriots, he had you know a buck twenty. You know what I mean? Then yes, multipliers all day and get out at halftime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you could do that, and that's what makes the Mojo market so versatile that you can just kind of you can play that way. Yeah, the in-game trading opportunities are solid. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm taking out Michael Carter. And I'm going quarterback. I, we didn't make a graphic or anything like that. Like, I just my decision. A guy I already invested in. I'm, I'm in on Kenny Pickett. So that's I'm going one more quarterback. Like you have, I, I look at the top of this portfolio as a Mahomes, Herbert, Mark Andrews as almost like the captains of my portfolio. You know what I mean? Like the guys that are gonna, no matter what, they're gonna be there. They're gonna put up their numbers. They're gonna have a hell of a career. Um, but then like you gotta have you gotta the next generation the of, of of lead. And I think Kenny Pickett. Based off this offense, based off the way Mike Tomlin runs, look, you saw the career that Big Ben had, and I'm not saying that Big Ben and Kenny Pickett are anything relatively the same. They're I'm just not. waiting on next year's QB class, honestly. Well, That's where that, my, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm and, stacking chips for next year because soon, it is loaded. And soon, within the mojo market, you're going to be able to invest in these guys before they get – just imagine a world, right? Here comes your, your dream bubble. You know, Imagine a world where you could invest in a Justin Herbert or a Patrick Mahomes before they got here. You'd be on that yacht already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the beauty of this market. And, and I'm very pumped about that aspect of the mojo market when they introduce these college players because I'm in on certain guys that I think are gonna uh, completely ball out. You you were mentioning you've been saying until so you're blue in the face, the running back out of Texas. You know, like you're right, Texas Lumber, or UCLA? UCLA Charbonnet. Yes. Right. You're in on Both all these guys, guys. And soon you'll be able to do that. But all right, putting a bow on the running backs and uh, running backs room. What do we got here? That, are we tapped out? Let's see, running back cover. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm all tapped out. Spent all thousand. All right, Brian Robinson. I'm getting rid of Michael Carr. I'm spending the fifty. I'm going to move that up to Kenny Pickett. Brees Hall. I'm in on. I'm with that. I'm. I'm all. I'm all so, on Brees. So Hall. A recap. It's two fifty each on Herbert and Mahomes. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we got fifty dollars on Mark Andrews. Mm -hmm. We have $100 on Jamison Williams. My man. God. 50 on Waddle, 50 mm. on Alec Pierce, 50 on Romeo Dobbs, 50 Duvernay. on Dever Duvernay. You're going to take the Michael Carter out, so we'll keep 50 on Kenny Pickett, mm -hmm. With 50 multipliers. on Brees Hall, All and day. 50 on Brian Robinson. Go to the window right now. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. I'd like to place my uh, wagers here. And, and look, this is this is the stuff that we're talking about. Like Every day when we're, you know, you're, we're banging you over the head with, with specific players that you want to invest in, this right here is a good core, like a thousand dollars. Like, there's been fantastic writing on Mojo.com. I think our boy Dalton did a yeah, great write up with a million dollars. Percent poached the idea from Dalton's article. Yeah, but he spent a million dollars. He he put a million nine out. times I out of ten. I was gonna say nine times out of ten, the common man who wants to use this market doesn't have a million dollars. So we kind of want to make it a little bit more realistic, bring it down to a thousand. I still don't even feel comfortable doing that, but. It's cool. I digress. I'm with this whole portfolio. I am all for making money with you. So I thank you. I think. Check back we're with me in, in five we're years. We're in a good place. When Dave. I'm we're celebrating my 42nd birthday. And I'm wondering, how is my money doing? Um, all right. We actually have a Thursday night football game to get into real quick. Uh, but the reason why it's it's a, a little bit of a brush over is because the, the quality of teams that are coming out there uh, aren't that great. We talked about Carson Wentz before. Uh, we act. I guess the one thing to keep your eye on, since I'm going to make all my investments today, is one Brian Robinson. So I'll be watching him uh, the entire game. Uh, you do have a a play here that I think is the guarantee. Uh, not a guarantee. I shouldn't say that because nothing is guaranteed. You're going to short Wentz? I am shorting Wentz all day with this. I am so – and look – Keep your eyes out on the Mojo Markets social media, right? You got the Twitter. You got the uh, – especially emails. I get emails all day with this. You got to watch out for the multipliers. Like, yeah, you have so, to see which so ones they're offering. there's a primetime game, there's something coming your way yes. as far as Mojo multipliers are so, concerned. So be on the lookout for that. If for whatever reason that the powers that be over there decide to grace you with an, a multiplier on the short game on Carson Wentz, that's my play of the night. That's the one I'm going with. I am so – Tired of this guy. It's, just, it's something about his face. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I just I, he, he can't play football. He's not a good football player. I don't know. I don't. I'm not so sure. I agree with you on this one. I think and, this is a good spot for the Commanders. Well, this is why. And, and and the only reason why I could be wrong here, okay, is because Mr. Ron Rivera went out there and called out his quarterback this week. So he's just like basically. I'll put. A, I'm paraphrasing. Hey, coach, what's wrong with your team? Why are you behind the rest? quarterback okay cool Carson Wentz can either answer the call well I or mean, he can just continue to stink I mean that's not fair because the offensive line 
gave up like 16 sacks in a two game stretch. But he would have said that. So the well, he should have. He should have. He right. should have. He should have. Because said, I don't know, listen, who he, our I don't know who's is... running around like that back behind the line of scrimmage and, and but have you ever getting seen... sacked 16 times in a two-game stretch and playing well. Have you ever seen but like is the writing not on the wall with Carson Wentz? Like clearly he was there with the Eagles. He had an MVP type I mean, caliber season. But then I look, should be honest. But what I'm saying he's is worse with a clean pocket. Like, what I'm I saying is he came out in 2016. Carson Wentz is having a really bad He's year. on his third team in six years. That's got to be that, – that's something to say. Or six, uh, yeah, he was drafted in 20, uh, 2016 with the only guy that was drafted in 2016 that's still on the same team, quarterback, Rain Dakota Prescott. I'm, I'm saying like so, I would short Wentz for his career. I don't think he's going to make it long term in this league, but as far as tonight goes, I think he might have a decent day. I think Terry McLaurin is waiting to – he's just simmering. He another, hasn't had his game yet, and uh, it's going to come. Another short play, honestly, and I, and I like the player, but I don't like the situation is David Montgomery. I don't know if he's going to fare well against that defensive line. I know Zeke and Pollard had a very hard time, and I watched that game thoroughly. Yes, the one thing that, that defensive line well. is still good without Chase Young. Chase Young's not debuting tonight, right? I, 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 I don't think so. I haven't heard so, Chase But they I are debuting Young, some orange uniforms. I in case couldn't you care. figure out what was going on. I wonder if Chase Young's playing at all this year because I can't find It just news seems on like they're, they're very... They're very like close to the vest with that. You're just like, eh, well, he'll he'll get in there eventually, because the season could be lost before you know it. Because if you got the NFC East rocking with a five and zero Eagles, four and one Dallas Cowboys, four and one Giants, and all of a sudden the uh, the Washington Commanders drop onto the Bears, you're looking at a lost season. There, there's no coming back three games down six weeks into the year. You just, it's just not happening. And I'm sorry for all you Commanders fans out there, all four of you. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just think that it's not a good situation for you, for, for you to be in. I like the Bears in this game. I, I, I like the... I like the uniforms that they're unveiling. <laughs> I like all that stuff. Give me the Bears all day. I think the Bears stink. I'm shorting Justin Fields in this game. Ooh, okay. I do like David Montgomery in this one because you do like I know all over the place. the Bears can't throw the football, and they don't even try. Mm -hmm. So David Montgomery, whether or not he's going to have success, that's another story, but he's going to have opportunity. And I could see him getting a goal line plunge or two. Okay. I could definitely see that. This is going to be a low-scoring game as far as I see it. But you never know. Thursday, I think all the unders have hit so far. I think it's 5-0. and oh, And here I was thinking, like, I could split screen this up. I got the Yankees playing. Over, and now there's supposed to be rain in the forecast. So I might be forced. Like, almost as if, like, this is like a uh, a certain sick, uh, certain show on Netflix right now where you're forced to watch something you don't want to watch. Yeah, <laughs> I think there, this might be that there game. There is no Jahan Dotson in this one. So mm -hmm. I, I'm a fan of him in the red zone. But I'm going to go with Scary Terry. I think Scary Terry okay. is due. He's too good of a talent to hold back. He's signed that deal in the offseason. He hasn't really lived up to the billing. Not entirely his fault. Some other guys got involved in the red zone. He's taken a lot of the attention away. But I think with the Chicago defense is just not good. Um, they're they're not good against the run. They're not good against the pass. They're just not a good defense. The only reason why their defense doesn't give up a ton of points is because they don't throw. They they simply don't throw the ball. So they they drag the games out. I expect it's that the Cooper Rush the Cowboys this. offense. <laughs> it's just not throwing. They so, just don't throw. In any event. Have fun watching that one tonight. And, of course, tomorrow we'll be back to preview a bunch of the really, really good games that we see, a lot of storylines, a, a lot of things that you would see in the Mojo market. I do want to tell you guys to make sure you follow Mojo across all social media platforms, whether it be TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, at Mojo. These are the guys to follow for all your information. You want to join the Discord. There's going to be a conversation to be had. There might be a uh, a Twitter spaces tonight if you want there to jump be. in that conversation right before pregame. I know uh, Luke is one of the big dogs over there who like to talk a big game and I love hearing him talk because I think he's very knowledgeable and actually there's a new episode today of Risers and Followers right here on the YouTube channel so go check those guys out as well be sure to check out mojo.com for all your in-depth analysis and those bloggers are fantastic those guys are doing their work and that's exactly what inspired us to build our portfolio today as we head into week number six so for Dave Sergio, Chris Gucci A5 behind the glass from Chop Studios this has been another episode of the Mojo Market Report we'll be back here tomorrow on a football Friday. Let's go.